Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're um, we're going somewhere really special, a very human exploration. Mm -hmm. We're diving into the just extraordinary journeys of three men, Paul Edmonds, Mark Frank, and Adam Castillo. Yeah, remarkable stories. Absolutely. These are individuals who've done something that, well, for decades, it seemed medically impossible. Yeah. They've been cured of HIV. Truly groundbreaking. So our mission, our goal for this deep dive is really to unpack their stories. Get beyond just the science, mm -hmm. you know, extract the, the human elements, the personal insights that make what they went through so compelling and frankly, so relevant for you listening right now. Right. We want to understand what that experience actually feels like yeah. and how it's shaping the future. And I think what hits you immediately is the um, the historical weight of these cases. For so long, an HIV cure was like the ultimate goal, almost mythical, you know. The holy grail. Exactly. And now we have real people real examples. It's not just lab data anymore. This represents a huge shift in what we thought was possible in medicine. And their experiences, they go way beyond just the clinical side. They give us this incredible window into, well, human resilience, the whole complexity around identity and that ongoing vital fight against stigma that's uh, that's always shadowed HIV. Decades of it. For decades, yeah. yeah. They really show how these like individual medical wins can ripple out and have this much bigger societal impact. That's a really powerful way to think about it. And, you know, speaking of individuals, huh. imagine being one of only a handful of people on the entire planet who've shared this unique experience. Hard to fathom. Right. So Paul, Mark, and Adam, they've shared their stories before individually. But what happens when they actually meet, mm -hmm. when they come together? What's that like? Yeah. Paul Edmonds described it, I thought, beautifully. He said it felt like family, a family that's growing. Wow. And he felt that, you know, the more of them there are, the stronger that message of, hope gets globally. Hmm. So what does that really mean for them and maybe for the wider HIV community to find this this unique kind of connection? Well, it's um it's more than just connection, isn't it? It's like the start of a new kind of collective voice, a new form of advocacy. Oh, ah, okay. What's really striking is how these individual cures, which you might think would be isolating because they're so rare. Right, you'd be totally alone. Exactly. But instead, they've actually built this entirely new kind of community. Mark Frank had put it really well, saying that showing their faces helps put a human face to HIV and dismantles stigma. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the psychological side of that, not just being cured, but then finding others who genuinely get what that journey was like. Yeah, who understand that specific thing. Right. It moves from being this solitary medical event to being a shared source of strength, of advocacy, of hope. And Adam Castillo, he echoed that too. He talked about their shared goal, you know, spreading hope, but also being this living proof that the fight against stigma, it's, it's definitely not over. Oh. So the shared experience, it creates a platform, really, turns personal journeys into something bigger. Putting a human face on it, both the disease and that cure. It links so perfectly to this year's AIDS conference theme, doesn't it? Put people first. It does, yeah. I mean, the intention behind a theme like that is obvious, but, you know, the reality for patients on the ground can sometimes be, well, pretty different. Mm -hmm. Often is. So thinking about their own treatments, which must have been incredibly tough. Yeah. Did these men actually feel like they were prioritized? Like the system really did put them first. Paul Edmonds, um, amazingly, he said his experience was overwhelmingly positive. That's great to hear. Yeah, he described being fully informed, supported, never pressured, and he really stressed that every decision was his. I mean, that sounds like the absolute ideal, doesn't it? It really does. It's the gold standard. And Paul's experience, it shows what patient-centered care can look like, but... And this is important. Mark Frank's experience, it shows a more, maybe a more typical picture, a bit more mixed. So while he mostly felt well treated, he also ran into misunderstandings in healthcare. And that's not just, you know, a small thing. It points to a really critical systemic issue. This need, he mentioned, to educate doctors and the media beyond just the, the basic medical facts. Right. It's about the communication, the empathy. Exactly. Empathy, accurate information, respectful communication. And then Adam Castillejo's story, it reveals something even tougher. He actually faced discrimination early on because of my HIV status. Oh, even during treatment. Early on, yeah. And he really emphasized that changing language and perceptions is essential. So this brings up a big question for everyone, really. How do we make sure healthcare systems actually live up to that put people first 
idea? Mm. How do we tackle not just the medical stuff, but the biases, the communication failures, the, you know, the invisible weight of stigma? It's about moving from just a clinical interaction to something that really sees the whole person. That's such a stark reminder, isn't it? Yeah. Even with amazing medical breakthroughs, the human side care, compassion, understanding, just fundamental. Yeah, absolutely. So let's dig into something really nuanced now. Identity. For some people, a chronic illness can become, well, kind of woven into who they are. Sure. There might even be a sort of fear, maybe subconscious, of losing a part of yourself if you're cured of something that's defined so much of your life. Mm. How do these men feel about that, about their identity post-cure? Paul Edmonds, for instance, he said he still feels connected to the HIV community. He sees it as part of my life story. And that's fascinating, isn't it? It shows how varied and deeply personal the relationship with a medical condition can be and mm -hmm. how identity isn't just about a diagnosis or, you know, the lack of one later. Right. Paul's view, it suggests this sense of continuity, of belonging. He's acknowledging his past is still part of him now. But then you have Mark Frank who had a different take. He said, point blank, HIV was never an identity issue for him. Oh, interesting. Yeah. He said the real challenge, his main focus, was just recovering from that incredibly tough stem cell transplant, the thing that actually cured him. So the procedure itself were the overwhelming experience, not the HIV status vanishing. For him, yes. It really highlights how different people experience illness and recovery. And then Adam Castileo, his perspective is, I think, really powerful. He said, being cured doesn't erase your past. We're still survivors, part of the community. Hmm, that's lovely. Isn't it? It reinforces that their connection, their shared history of resilience, it goes beyond just their cure status. It's proof of how profoundly a shared struggle can create these lasting bonds, these identities that aren't just, you know, wiped clean by a medical fix. Yeah, that really lands. Their history, the fights they won, the community they built, that's still absolutely part of who they are, cure or no cure. Exactly. So, okay, let's pivot a bit. Let's think about the millions of people still living with HIV today. People waiting, hoping for a cure, or maybe even just better treatments than we have now. What messages, what specific words of hope do these pioneers, these like living examples of what's possible have for them? Paul Edmonds offers something really important, I think. He reminds everyone that current treatments now allow people to live long, healthy lives. That's crucial grounding. Absolutely. Manageable condition now for most. Right. And he also expresses his personal fervent hope to see a widely available cure in my lifetime. And that's a great combination, isn't it? Grounded in today's reality, but looking with real optimism to the future. It's so important people know how far we've come already. HIV isn't a death sentence anymore for most people who have access to care. Huge progress. Huge. And Mark Franca, he builds on that optimism about a cure. He said every cure case adds another piece to the puzzle, bringing scientists closer than ever. And that's not just, you know, wishful thinking. That reflects how science actually works. Iteration. Learning from each case. Exactly. Each case, even though they're rare right now, gives invaluable clues about how to actually eliminate the virus. Then Adam Castillo, he offers something simple but really powerful. Researchers worldwide are working tirelessly. There is hope. Mm, simple and direct. Yeah. And it's true. It's not just words. It reflects the relentless global effort happening right now. That's what fuels real data-backed optimism for the future of HIV treatment and, yes, eventually a widespread cure. That's genuinely uplifting to hear, especially thinking about people who've lived with this reality for decades. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thinking about the future. For those who might one day experience a cure, maybe through a less intense method than these guys went through. Which is the goal, of course. Right. What practical advice do these pioneers have for navigating that completely new reality? Because as we've been saying, it's not just about the medical side ending. No. The journey continues. Paul Edmonds suggests that newly cured people should research our journeys. Mm. He says there's actually a lot of good information out there now from their public sharing. And he also mentioned, encouragingly, that his own experience going public has been overwhelmingly positive. Which is great to hear. And what's really fascinating there is how deeply these men understand the um, the emotional, the social complexity that comes with such a massive life change. It's not just medical. It's about redefining yourself publicly and privately. Mark Frank urges future cured people to share our faces and stories to show HIV in a positive context. 
that really speaks to the power of advocacy through lived experience, right? Yeah, changing the narrative. Exactly. Turning what was stigmatized into a symbol of hope, of progress. And Adam Castillo, he touches on something profoundly personal. He described coming out as cured as potentially being like a second coming out. Wow, that's a powerful analogy. Isn't it? Especially resonant given the history of HIV and the LGBTQ plus community. And he reassures them that new members are welcomed into this very unique community with open arms. That's incredible. A ready-made support system. It really speaks volumes about the network they're building. They recognize that even a cure brings new challenges, challenges that need shared understanding, community support. It just underscores how vital peer support and sharing stories are when you're adapting to these huge life shifts. A second coming out, that's just, Ugh. it really captures how multi-layered this whole journey is, far beyond just the physical healing. Mm -hmm. And of course, with these public profiles, they're now dealing with significant media attention. And maybe even harder, the constant fight against misinformation. How do they handle that? The scrutiny, the battle for good information. Paul Edmonds, interestingly, said he actually hasn't felt overwhelmed by media attention. That's well, that's quite something. Speaks to his resilience, maybe a good management strategy. Mark Franca, though, he's got a very clear tactic. He says he avoids social media to protect my peace. Understandable. Very. And Adam Castanejo, he takes a more balanced approach, choosing to share selectively and make time to recharge privately. It's interesting seeing these different personal strategies for staying well while being in the public eye. Yeah, everyone finds their own way. But it does raise that bigger question, doesn't it? How do individuals and how does the community as a whole fight back against all the misinformation out there, especially about health? Mark Frank specifically mentioned the problem of misinformation online about fake cures. Ugh, that old problem. Yeah, and he stressed how crucial it is to actively correct it. It must be exhausting. Yeah. A constant battle against just noise and outright lies. Adam Castillo even pointed out the really worrying fact that some deny HIV exists. Still. Still. Yeah. After 40 years, a global reality is <laughs> just mind-boggling that basic truths are still being fought over. It is. It shows how much work is still needed on just basic health literacy, challenging denialism, even before we get to the complex science. Yeah. But, you know, connecting back to the positive, the progress. Let's talk about the recent AIDS 2024 conference. What were some of the big moments for these men there? What really resonated? Paul Edmonds mentioned the opening ceremony was emotional and inspiring. Oh, I can only imagine. Seeing the whole global community focused on this mm. must have been powerful for them. Immensely powerful, I think. Yeah. Witnessing that collective energy, celebrating progress, but also acknowledging the road ahead. Absolutely. And thinking about the science progress you mentioned earlier, Mark Frank highlighted some genuinely amazing news from the conference. He said... Hearing that new treatments like Lena Capavir will be accessible worldwide was amazing. Yes. Okay, so for listeners who might not know, what is Lena Capavir and why is making it accessible globally such a huge deal? Okay, yeah, good question. It's really important. Lena Capavir is part of a relatively new class of HIV drugs called capsid inhibitors. So instead of targeting replication like older drugs, it messes with the HIV capsid that's the protein shell protecting the virus's genetic stuff. Ah, uh, different mechanism. Exactly. And the big game changer is that it's long acting. It can be given much less often, potentially just twice a year, an injection compared to daily pills. Twice a year. Wow. Yeah. And making that accessible globally, it's not just about convenience. It's revolutionary for adherence, especially in places with fewer resources. Think about stigma, privacy issues, just the logistics of getting daily meds. Mm -hmm. This bypasses a lot of that. Changes the whole dynamic of treatment. Fundamentally. Improves quality of life. And it's a powerful new tool for prevention, too. So seeing these clinical steps forward combined with real efforts on access, that's multifaceted progress. And Adam Castillejo also noted something vital. Representation matters, seeing trans and pediatric HIV issues highlighted. Important communities. Crucial. It shows that progress isn't just clinical. It has to be about social justice, about making sure all communities affected by HIV are seen, heard, and supported. What an absolutely incredible conversation this has been. Paul Edmonds, Mark Frank, Adam Castillejo. They are just living proof, aren't they? Proof of what can happen when science, sheer perseverance, and um, and human connection all come together. They're stories. They're not just about medical miracles. They're these deep narratives about the human spirit, the strength you find in community when things are tough, and uh, that relentless drive toward the future without HIV. Thank you so much for joining us on this this really extraordinary deep dive today.
And what's truly fascinating, I think, is how these individual stories of cure, which often came from really complex procedures like stem cell transplants, targeting specific things like the CCR5 receptor. Right, that built a 32 mutation. Exactly, that genetic resistance factor. How these rare cases don't just highlight amazing medical breakthroughs, but also that enduring power of human connection and the vital ongoing work needed to dismantle stigma and get real health equity globally. These are still rare, yes, but they're like invaluable blueprints for future therapies that could be much more widely used. Mm -hmm. So maybe this raises an important question for you listening now to think about as you go out your day. Beyond the science, beyond the medical wins we've talked about, what other shifts do we need in society? Shifts in how we see things and policies, maybe just in basic compassion. What's needed to make sure that everyone living with or affected by HIV truly feels put first, like that conference theme said, no matter their status, no matter where they live. A powerful question to leave us with. Until next time, stay informed, stay hopeful.